You're listening to Overwatch League Daily, your daily source for Overwatch League news, scores, and more. Here's your host, Kicked Tripod. Good morning, Overwatch League fans. This is your Overwatch League Daily episode for February 7th, 2018. Today I am joined by, well, me. (laughs) It's just going to be me today. We're going to try something a little bit new to see how it works. So we're going to discuss and preview this week's matches as we go into the Stage 1 playoffs. So as I said before, we are trying something a little bit different. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I really enjoy talking and speaking and um, doing all the research that it takes to uh, do one of these episodes. And sometimes I don't really get to do that because I'm too busy editing or scheduling or interviewing somebody else. And so we're going to switch it up. This will be very rare. But I really wanted to talk about two big themes this week. And the first one, or not even themes, but two big topics that I'm really looking forward to this week. And the first one is going to be the three teams uh, to make the stage playoffs. And so I'm going to go a little bit in depth on what teams I think are best set up to do so, what teams I think might surprise, and how it might go from there. The other topic I wanted to discuss is the Boston Uprising. The Boston Uprising have a hugely important week this week. They have to play against the Houston Outlaws and the Philadelphia Fusion. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into it. So there are four teams that are fighting for the playoffs right now, that third playoff spot, most likely. Uh, But rather than trying to center in on the the four teams that are fighting for it, I think it might be a more productive conversation to discuss the three teams that I expect have the best chance to make the playoffs and why. So first and foremost, we're going to start with NYXL. The NYXL play the Spitfire and the Mayhem this week. And if there's one thing that we've seen, they've only gotten better. Outside of a hiccup loss to Fusion, they've pretty much been stellar. So ultimately, they would have to lose to London and Florida to not make the playoffs. And I don't even then I'm not actually sure if it's mathematically possible for them to do that. But uh, if there is a possibility, it would require them losing both of those. Uh, Obviously London and New York are basically playing for that buy if they play as expected this week. So it's, um, it's, it's not a a huge stake game because it's pretty, pretty, uh, it's pretty clear that NYXL should 3-1 or 4-0 the Mayhem this week. So that shouldn't be anything that they're worried about. So it really comes down to how do they perform against the Spitfire. So NYXL is my first pick for a team that I think is, is definitely going to be in it. My second pick is going to be the London Spitfire, of course. And they got their big win against Seoul. So right now Spitfire in first place. A big part of, and this isn't shown on the Overwatch League website, a big part of how you are ranked is your overall uh, wins, your wins and losses, of course, but also how many maps you win or lose. So um, that's why we always see four maps being played. That's a question that we hear all the time on our Twitter and email is, why do we play four maps? Well, uh, because of tiebreakers, basically. So uh, Spitfire is sitting pretty well for that. They also, though, probably have the most difficult week coming up. It is quite possible that NYXL could beat the Spitfire. And they also play Houston, who honestly, they have the potential to steal a match from any team, especially with how they've been playing. If we're going to see Linkser back this week, which I don't have any info on, but assuming that we're we're going to see Linkser, it is highly likely that... Uh, the the that Houston could put up a really good fight here and so that's something to really look forward to the last team well not the last team but the team that I think is the third most likely to be there is Seoul it is most likely that Seoul becomes the the third team for the stage one playoffs just mathematically speaking but um they play the Valiant 
And if the Valiant defeat Stoll, it's a pretty good chance that the Valiant could be that third team in the playoffs. The Valiant have what can be thought of as an easy game against Shanghai on Friday. So you can be sure that the Valiant are going to be putting all of their time and effort into preparing for the Seoul match. And it's pretty unlikely that Seoul loses to San Francisco. So later on in the week, Seoul plays San Francisco. Probably not going to happen. Uh, But if the Valiant beat Seoul, this becomes very, very interesting because the Valiant probably 3-1 or 4-0 Shanghai. You have uh, the Houston Outlaws that play the Boston Uprising um, as well as the London Spitfire. So I I would say despite how good the Houston Outlaws look right now, even if they come out with two wins – I don't think it's very likely that they win them by much, right? And so there's chances that, you know, Boston, if they can play really well and, you know, 4-0 and surprise Philly or 3-1 and surprise Philly, that it basically could be a jump ball of a game. But at the end of the day, I really do think that the best chance uh, for, for teams that take that third spot from Seoul has to be the Valiant or Boston. So we're going to go ahead and have to see how that looks. Speaking of Boston, Boston has really been on a tear, at least for me recently. They 4 0'd the LA Valiant and the LA Gladiators last week. The week before that, they uh, obviously beat the London Spitfire and then beat the uh, Dallas Fuel 3 2. They are trending upwards. By any measure of it, they're trending upwards. You're seeing Note play much better. Nico playing much better. You're seeing the team uh, have a level of cohesion that we saw glimpse glimpses of really early on in the season when you would listen to and, and watch the broadcast. All you would hear about is, oh, they're just so close. They have the strategy there. They just can't execute or they can't change or they can't adapt. And they're doing that. Now, uh, they've gone from losing to teams like San Francisco in week two to where they are now. That's a really that's a really big upward uh, progression so far. And one thing that I really wanted to highlight, and this is something that Avril said on the last show, uh, but it really left an impression on me. And that was basically he asked the question, what does Boston need to do to be taken seriously? And in my opinion, This is the week that is the test for that. The one to go from, oh, they're just, you know, a bunch of underdogs to this is a a really great powerhouse team. So for the first match, uh, they play the Philadelphia Fusion. And how do I think Boston needs to address the Philadelphia Fusion? Uh, There's there's a couple of things. First of all, protect your supports. Uh, I can't think of a better situation than when the Valiant played the Fusion on Numbani last week. Carpe and Shadowburn took advantage of the Valiant's aggressive tanks and DPS. And basically, Carpe had all the time in the world to mess with Kareev and Verbo, and it was a miserable first map for them. However, you saw this at the end of Numbani, where they pulled back Silk Thread on Soldier 76 to sit with the supports and do... Obviously, they were doing damage as well, but he was sitting back there on the supports. They they gave up some of the uh, closer range DPS, some of the damage on the tanks so that they could go ahead and make sure that their supports uh, remain protected. This was the same thing on Temple of Anubis, uh, particularly on defense. You would see both the tanks immediately fall back to their supports. You would see... You would see Fate not use his jump until uh, it was something happening with the supports. And you would see him sit on that cooldown a lot of the time, even if there was maybe somewhere else that he could be that would be a little bit more beneficial for the team. And that comes down to my next point, which is Fraggy. Uh, be, I think the reason why you can do this and pull back a DPS and, and, and be a little bit more uh, cautious with your DPS is because of Fraggy. Fraggy dies a lot. He's died over 40 times in every match this season, and he's the only one to do that 
by far. There's no one even close to statistics like that. He dies early. He dies often, even in the matches where they win. So you can pull, uh, you can pull a, a DPS back to be able to uh, help out your supports, or just have a very, very aggressive uh, support protection strategy. Whether that's having your tanks dive back or keeping uh, someone back, like that, that's just going to be something that I think you can do against the fusion. And the third one is much easier said than done, but that's to keep Shadowburn at bay. And I really can't wait to see this because Shadowburn and Dream Casper to me are very similar DPS. They get a lot of kills. They die quite a bit. They have very similar play styles. Uh, and again, their hero pools are very similar. That being said, Boston's really struggled with against teams with strong carry DPSs like Fleta and Baby Bay and to a lesser extent, Sabi Olby. And so I'd be really curious to see if and how uh, they can address Shadowburn here, because really when it comes down to it, it is going to be Shadowburn versus Dreamcaster. Dreamcaster. I think Boston has proven that this should be a game that they win. And I think Boston will win this one by at least a three to one margin. So what about Boston versus Houston? This is another really important matchup. And I, I honestly think there's just two keys to what Boston needs to do, but they're very big keys. And the first is that Dream Casper needs to show that he is the best DPS player in the West. Before the last few weeks, if you asked me who I thought the best Western DPS was, it would be Lynxer and Shadowburn probably close behind. But now I think Dream Casper has at least inserted himself into the conversation. Not only that, I think that if Boston wins both matches this week, I think that would make it most likely definitive that at the current time, Dream Casper is the best DPS in the West. But he needs to play at least at Linkster's level the entire way. And that's not an easy task to do now if linkster doesn't play if he's out again which i everything i've seen it says that he should be playing uh but if he doesn't i think that dream casper is gonna have a real advantage here but if not this is gonna be really close and dream casper probably needs to play the best uh series of overwatch in his life so far the other thing I'll add to that is uh, Striker. I think that Striker kind of sits in the shadows a little bit because of everyone talking about how good Dream Casper is, and he is amazing. But Striker has been a rock for Boston for the longest time, and he has been one of the main reasons why Dream Casper is able to pull off and uh, get the kills that he does. And we've seen Houston struggle against teams with strong tracers. So it's going to be interesting to see here. And uh, this is something that I, I felt was the key to victory when they when Houston lost to NYXL. And it was simply the fact that they weren't able to deal with Sabiobi on tracer. And um, I think that if between Dream Casper harassing from the skies on Farah or on any other one of his many, many heroes and keeping Striker harassing the back lines on Tracer, I think you're going to really struggle for, uh, for Houston to actually be able to take this one um, if they play at the best, uh, at their best that we've been seeing them play the last few weeks. The other thing I want to add, and this is kind of, this is a little superstitious here. So I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get too into this, but I think it's something really interesting. And if you look at Boston and you look at uh, Houston, they both struggle on similar maps and they both excel on different maps. And there's one particular map where uh, they both struggle on well not map but map type control they they both aren't very good control teams and I think winning control could be the difference between an a win between a win and a loss 
in this uh, in this match. So that's something that I'm really going to be looking close uh, about. I think that um, Dream Casper wins the fair about battle on Ilios, and I think that that gives them the edge, and they have to take that advantage and turn it into a win in order for it to be um, a, a series that Boston can win. My thanks to myself for being on the show. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Kick Tripod as always. Um, we do have some great matches coming up tonight. We have the Shanghai Dragons taking on the Dallas Fuel at 4 p.m. Pacific. The San Francisco Shock taking on the LA Gladiators at 6 Pacific. And of course, I would say the big one and the one with the most immediate impact is the LA Valiant taking on the Soul Dynasty at 8 p.m. Pacific. Thank you all for tuning in for another episode of Overwatch League Daily. You can listen to us anywhere on the internet, including iTunes, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and Google Podcasts. And of course, you can watch or listen to the show on the front page of winstonslab.com. Again, thank you all so much. Again, make sure to uh, like, subscribe, whatever it is you do on the platform of choice. And I will see you tomorrow. I will be joined by Lemon Kiwi. She's an amazing Overwatch analyst and shoutcaster. uh, And she'll be discussing tonight's matches with me. I'll see you guys tomorrow.